Eh, hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? <laughs> Muy bien, ¿tú? <laughs> Muy bien, bueno. That's the end of my Spanish, so go in English. <laughs> so lovely to have you here in London. We're here at the Electric Brixton. You've got a gig here tonight. Yes. yes. Are you excited? What are your expectations for the evening? So excited. Yeah, every, every time we come to London, it's just like the biggest shows and the nicest crowds and really fun times. And you're here in a heat wave, so maybe you don't feel too far from home? No, exactly. We brought the weather with us. <laughs> and you're going to be showcasing new album, I Don't Run. Yes. And what can you tell us about that? What inspired you to make this album? What are the um, key things that you think stand out in it? Um, I, don't, I think it's like... This album is more Heinz than when Heinz was before, because <laughs> like we finally had the the time to like write and record and choose who we were gonna work with and what we're we gonna say and like because the first record everything happened like on a rush like while touring writing some songs and then just like a lot of time in between them so it didn't feel that compact and, and also like we co-produced it so we took many more decisions than yeah. in the first record so mm -hmm. that feels like. Yeah, also because we played so much that we had more knowledge, so it was easier to take the t decisions and stuff. Mm, yeah. So I feel like this is kind of like our self-titled record. Like if it was our first ever record, this would be actually it. Because <laughs> yeah, Heinz, Heinz, that's it. That's how it run. <laughs> and how would you define your sound and how it's evolved from "Leave Me Alone"? Um, I think it's more rock in general. Still like it's, power I think pop. it's m l more or less the same than what we were, but like maybe more adult. Yeah, like less, it's definitely not uh, lo-fi, yeah. but we still recorded it live, like the four of us, and we still didn't use autotune, obviously, and like, I don't know, it's just, it really, um, like, defines the band the way we are now, the same, the same that, that Leave Me Alone did by the time, you know, exactly. like, not knowing how to do, like, how we wanted to sound and stuff, like, you can see that messy, like, sound in, in Leave mm -hmm. Me Alone, and I think in I Don't Run, you can also see, like, how we sound live, like, how we're going to sound tonight. Mm -hmm. And what's the creative process like between you? Is it very collaborative? Is there someone that leads on, you know, writing the lyrics, someone else with the music? How does it all work between you? Yeah, um, lyrics and melodies uh, all in Carlo and me. Um, but then the all the rest... The song, yes. Yeah. Sometimes we start at home and we have a few chords in a melody and we bring it to the rehearsal room or sometimes we're in the rehearsal room with the four of us. We have an idea, but then we take, have to take it back because, like you know just a balance like we still care a lot about the music the solo the drums and stuff but care a lot about the melody so yeah, sometimes each song takes a while like yeah. each song goes through so many changes all the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. we're so annoying <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but in that sense would you say it's pretty democratic it's not like in some bands where you've kind of got you know someone no, leading I mean, the pack. We, everyone writes their own instruments that's a hundred percent the way it is but then also um, it's not that democratic but because we don't all write the melodies mm -hmm. so if we don't have melodies we don't Something have songs yes. you know what i mean so at the end it's uh, carlota and i um, um, spend more time with it like, in the end but um yeah we all 100 percent. it's like we all contribute and we all express ourselves and if someone was coming to your music for the first time picked up this new album is there a song that you would say really kind of summarizes what you're about or you know kind of captures the the feeling of the album <laughs> the thing is with this record like we feel like uh, p uh, nowadays it's not that usual to focus on the whole record like from the beginning to the end mm. it's more like a single um, era right now and we really I think we did and we worked on the on the whole process but from like the artwork to the songs yes. and the, yeah the, like everything around the album makes sense as a pack so I feel like if I say one song it wouldn't make sense because the club doesn't make sense without Linda or mm. you know what I mean but maybe just the first track you, we used it like kind of like as a identification card. So yeah, maybe like maybe the, the club between Leave Me Alone and I don't and know. And do you take specific inspiration for for the lyrics and for the themes? You know, do you take them from your personal experiences, or are they a bit more sort of otherworldly than that? Yeah, all about personal experiences. Yeah. Yeah, the good thing is like as we're both like we're friends and it's two people. I think it kind of like um, gives a good reflection of like. Because, for example, in pop, usually it's just like you blame on some, like the, if you have a problem, you blame it on someone else or you're suffering so much. And I think the fact of being two makes us more like, um, I don't know the word in English, but like we see more from the outside. So it's not like, oh, it's your fault because that could be a little bit childish sometimes. And I think this is a more mature album where we like realize 
what we did wrong and like maybe I have the, the problem maybe I'm suffering because I did something wrong mm -hmm. and um, yeah but it's always about our personal experiences mm -hmm. and you know it's you say it's not as lo-fi as the first one but there's still a kind of like raw energy somehow yeah. how to it you know would you say you have specific influences in terms of other musicians or artists that perhaps you grew up with or that you see around today mm, I, I mean we still like garage rock from like yeah. this wave that came from um America. From America, from California, like Shannon the Clams, Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks Growlers um, and stuff. Like, like yes. Yeah. I think like that kind of gender, it really um, lets you be honest because it's like uh, not about uh, sounding perfect. Like it's not really polished because it's like mm -hmm. if we're yelling, it's normal that it's that it sounds bad, that it sounds like someone yelling, not like someone singing that note, yeah. you know what I mean? So like when we were in the studio and we would do like different takes, we would always go for the one that actually makes you feel more or that we thought it makes you feel more. So yeah, and the fact that we recorded live too, like no click uh, for the drums, no, you know, it's just like, it makes it a little bit more punk and a little bit more like live, hmm. I guess. And you're still working in a genre which is predominantly, you know, male dominated let's yeah. say how how do you see yourselves fitting within that is it something that you're very conscious of being you know a female indie band or is it something you just do your thing and you know let the chips fall where they may i mean we always we, we don't want to focus you know our art on that like we never made the band to like change the rules and stuff and we actually never thought we had to fight until we were in the music industry and it's like if you don't fight you get like eaten by someone else you know mm. it's like all the times is a little content constant fight and like just being judged and being like having all the time to prove that you're good to prove that you deserve where you know it's it's yeah it's a little bit hard but we don't think it on our day to day because on our day to day is touring and it's just us and yeah. our tour manager like we have a female tour manager too we have a female a sound engineer like a friend and female photographer like we don't feel that at all, like especially outside, because it's like we're doing our things. Our fans are nice with us, and that's it. But then it's true that sometimes with press or with like the online world, yeah. uh, like a lot of bots and stuff, and it is there. But um, yeah, I think just by like doing what we're doing the way we're doing it, I think that's already like fighting enough and trying to change a little bit the rules. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've recorded you're from Madrid. You've recorded your, both your albums there, but you do sing in English, and I've kind of understood from reading some stuff online that you feel that your sort of native community haven't always had your back to, to an extent you know so how have you found that has that been a challenge and, and what do you think the root cause of that is the thing is um in spain um like especially with the music industry it's everything is slower so like f for a band to be like um to turn big or to like uh, play in festivals and stuff you have to like have a full record or like a bunch of records and have been playing for like 15 years and touring the same venues again and again um whether in london or the states or whatever it's more like whoa you have one song i love it do you want to play in london like that's how it happened to us and it's so fast everyone yeah. wants like the new stuff the hot stuff that is happening uh, now so it's not that I mean, it was just really weird for Spain because this has never happened to anyone before. Like, uh, having an international career, like, because when we play here in London, we play for people from London. It's not like, because there's bands that tour, but they play for the Spanish communities in each country, mm -hmm. and we don't do that. So it was a little bit hard for them to accept it. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, why are these girls doing it and no one has ever done it before? Yeah. You know, like, I, I get it. I get why it was uh, weird, but... Um, but now it's totally even like it just took longer and like yeah. once we released the first record they started getting it and now like that we've done the second one we're selling more records there than anywhere else so all good now they finally <laughs> come over to your yes. side yeah. you won them over give them the time but they're <laughs> yeah they're really nice too so what are your big expectations for this album you know with the tour and what have you got on the horizon what what are your your goals for the future <sighs> touring During, the world yes. yeah we have now the uk and then after this we're going to U europe and then to yeah. america so, and then we're going to japan in the summer festivals. festivals in the summer we're coming back we want to do like a longer uk tour like uk going to like smaller cities in the uk and then back to america for like a <laughs> five week probably australia too we really want to do south america we can't forget about spain so just yeah. basically touring the fuck out of it <laughs> <laughs> well that sounds amazing um and i hope you have a lot of fun with it Thank you. Thanks so much for your time and You're congratulations welcome. on a brilliant album. Thank you. <laughs>